Hello and welcome back to the Vision Mechanic. Now today we're going to talk about good eye drops. There's a story there, but uh, also I'm going to big brother you a little bit on this one, okay? There are many OTC or over-the-counter eye drops out there, and some are benign with inactive ingredients, and these are for rinsing and moisturizing your eyes. Many have preservatives that, on their own, can become a problem with protracted exposure and use. Other drops have active ingredients, and these can come into basically two categories, drops that whiten the eyes and the antihistamines. As a rule, if a drop has a compound you cannot recognize or pronounce, you should speak to the pharmacist at the very least before putting it in your eyes, and therefore potentially into your bloodstream. In most cases, optometrists offer health care that is either covered or subsidized by government health care and insurance benefits, and they would be your best point of contact if you feel you need eye drops at all for a medical problem. It seems every week in clinic, I have at least a couple of patients who come in with dry, red, hot eyes. These cases generally start some weeks or months earlier when the patient had a mild eye issue like an allergy or earlier bacterial or viral infection. They, on their own accord, or following a pharmacist's advice, reach for a good eye drop that will do the trick. They have no medical reason for selecting the particular drop, but based on pricing, label, or general advice, they take the good eye drop for weeks on end sometimes. At first, there might be a sense of some sort of benefit. Then it all leads to a condition called medicamentosa, or an immune toxicity reaction to repeat application of active ingredients like tetrahydrosoline, a common vasoconstrictor, and the ever-present preservatives like BAK or benzalkonium chloride. The eyes become red, irritated, crusty, hot, itchy, burning, and this compels the use of even more drops. Vasoconstrictors like those found in Visine, Clear Eyes, Murine, all have one goal in mind. Constrict the vasos, that is, constrict the blood vessels. This literally shrinks vessels in the eye on its surface, and it gives the impression of a cure. Now, there's a few problems here. Number one, you are masking the problem. As a doctor, I want to see your eye red to assist me in elucidating the problem and offering proper advice. Number two, you are making the problem worse by not attending to the real concern. Number three, you are creating a new problem through medicamentosa. And finally, number four, you are literally restricting much needed blood flow to the eyes, something we need especially during times of duress like infections. Before we continue, if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to The Vision Mechanic to be the first to know about our latest videos on vision and development. As a rule, I only recommend neutral artificial tears, and there are several out there with varying chemistry and uses, from lower viscosity, watery drops for rinsing, to thicker, higher viscosity drops for moisturizing. Now beware, these can also contain preservatives, so look at the label and talk to your pharmacist or your doctor. But good examples include Blink, Sustain, Renew, and others. For occasional allergy problems, I like to advise use of Soothe antihistamine drops. These are cooling, safe, and they can be used as needed provided you stay within the maximum dosing range of three to four applications daily. Now you should know that this does include a vasoconstrictor, so be careful with it. Again, stick to the maximum dosing or less. And finally, since many eye infections involve the tear ducts, I like to also recommend nasal rinses to keep the eyes clear. A good eye drop should be defined as the drop that does the job most effectively at a decent price. If you can't pronounce or recognize an ingredient name, look it up or avoid the product entirely. When in doubt, there is no doubt. You need to see your eye doctor and save your money until you know what the problem is and what you need. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, give it a like and consider subscribing to The Vision Mechanic and sign up at visionmechanic.net. If you have any questions or comments, we'd also like to hear from you in the comment section below.